It's your man, Poo Nanners, your Texas caster and hype master. And I'm Palador, just Palador, and happy to be here to show off the always incredible Echo Act Arena action. Yeah, season three of VRL has begun, and this one is going to be a sprint. It's free to participate, and the Echo Discord is a great place to find mentors and teammates. There's a ton of cash on the line, and of course, the all-important bragging rights. Of course, Poo Nanners. But maybe competition is too stressful, or it doesn't fit your schedule, or for some reason, you hate money. <laughs> In that case, I want to take a second to shout out Pizza League. Now, Pizza League is a new community-driven league that was born just a couple months ago among some of Echo Arena's dedicated player base as a means of uh, featuring some of the best competition that the game has to offer. Now, we boast a schedule that caters to everyone's availability, and every match is streamed live on Twitch, complete with cameramen, high-level community casters for the hype and the analysis. I'm one of them. Yeah, and yes, a grand prize of pizza for the winners. Uh, if you're interested in watching, just look up Echo Pizza League on Twitch, or if you've got an established team and are looking to play, message Wit or Dash on the Discord channel for uh, Echo VR. Now, we're looking to also get more Echo Combat teams involved in the very near future, so uh, yeah, if you have any teams and you want to play, hit us up. Pizza League. The hottest thing since sliced pizza. <laughs> uh, each week, with the help of our community, we'll be bringing you the highlights of Echo Arena. It's a lot of work to put these shows together, so we're uh, reaching out to Big Man himself to see if he can help us get going on the um, on, a, on a completely separate show for Echo Combat. Uh, first right. up in our coverage is Team Lethargy versus Team Gravity. Uh, both teams contain veterans of league play and former teammates as new rivals. Team Lethargy with the offensive joust early in the game, but Team Gravity doing what they've done best since Season 1 with plays like this one with a lightning fast stack. And notice how Boop immediately breaks off after the steal to open himself up for that pass, leading to the easy open three. Later on, Lethargy with another offensive joust, but they make a good adjustment here by giving themselves more spacing on that initial pass to act as a buffer against the aggressive Gravity stack. It works out nicely, and after some good triangle passes, Gravity's stack gets broken up right here, and Ravel passes to Infinity, who in finishes the play nicely with a little half-spin and fling for two. Here, we've got Lethargy with a good defensive pressure to cut off that front pass, but Boop is able to reset to Viatrex, who passes to Aventer, which draws out Boop's defender, leaving him just open enough for one more pass and score. Good defense, but efficient offense by Gravity to overcome it. Closing it out, we've got Boop with the disc, and with a wave of his hands, parts the defenders like the Red Sea, and delivers the disc to the promised land for three. Boop with a dagger of a shot there, and uh, let me tell you, that man can shoot. Yes, yes he can. Team Gravity take the series 2-0, to zero, handing Team Lethargy their only loss in Week 1. Uh, next matchup is Radioactive versus Mariachis. Great names all around. Uh, freshly shuffled teams with the return of the previ previously injured The Niles, who at the time of his retirement was undeniably the best defender in the game. Mariachi's on offense here, toying pants with a disc and about to duck his man. But watch Denials on the left, gets a boost off his man and body blocks the goalie just in time for the shot. And Mariachi's there practicing the three D's of Echo Arena, dodge, duck, and denials. Moving on, Mariachi's running a small backcourt triangle, Twang Pants passing to the cutting denials, but Taco on Thursday swoops in for the nice save, but then Twang Pants catches him off guard, grabs a disc, and puts it in for those second chance points. A nice job there not giving up on the play. Radioactive with joust advantage now, and getting in some laser accurate passing at mid, playing some monkey in the middle around that Mariachi stack. So, Radioactive is able to work the disc into the scoring zone based off of that, but the spectator cam actually blacks out here at the worst possible time, leaving it all to our imagination, but resulting in two points for Radioactive nonetheless. Later in the second match, Bad Internet throwing the disc way downfield, but it actually bounces off the corner of the tube it looks like and banks in for the wild three. The big story in this game, though, were the Mariachis stepping it up with some denial defense, if you'll pardon the pun. They did a great job pressuring the disc whenever it got into their bubble, and Middleman82, just a middleman on a mission, getting his hands on seemingly every shot that came his way. Oh, man. Uh, it's, uh, Mariachis take the series 2-0, to zero, and it's good seeing the Niles back. Very exciting to see him in his top form, and I just want to just say this. Even when we saw him before, when he was defending, that's always what you saw is inside the bubble. His percentage 
uh, ability to stop the disc. You know, like it goes down. It's sort of hard to predict when somebody gets inside the bubble, gets in close. But he always had a percentage that was supernatural. It was more than what was expected normal. Like he just knew where you were going to toss it and when he needed to grab. It was always right. exciting to watch him at top form. And it was a huge loss when he broke his wrist and played on a broken wrist and then broke it again and that he had uh, left the league for a while. So it's good that he's back. Yeah, yeah. back in the days of early Echo Arena especially, the, the balance between offense and defense was very, very lopsided in favor of the offense. And I think it's still the case right now, but especially back then, I mean, most people, you got to get a one-on-one at goal with anyone in goal. It just it doesn't matter. You score. But then you had people like Denials, mm. um, you know, people like on the North American side, I know you had, you know, Seal Bag and, and Subtlety and um, he also had Affentair, of course. But it's like there are so few really great goalies back in the, those days. And even though they're a lot more common now, it's like Niles is one of the uh, the, the, the forefathers. He, will, he's a little Neo TV. in the Matrix with that repetitive yeah. stop and inside the bubble. That's good stuff. So, again, yeah. uh, it's good to have him back, right? Uh, but moving on, uh, what's probably the most anticipated match of the week was Team Gravity, who took on Synergy with our highest level players in the EU on both sides. This match did not disappoint. First play of the game, both teams end up fumbling around on the opening joust, but Boop gets a nice punch here, snags a disc, and puts it in from that inside corner for the early lead. The very next play, though, after a little scramble, Synergy retains possession, and watch this. Affin on defense with a nib, but Nillywick with a nab right back at him and flings it into the goal as he fades to the right. Didn't even get a good look at the goal, but he had the instinct and wherewithal to put that one in. Moving on up, Gravity playing the ground game here. Boop sends a pass to Viatrex, but Nillywick coming in with the excellent defensive play, but unfortunately throws it right into the hands of Affentair. Now goal is only open for a sliver, but it's just enough for Team Gravity to take advantage and score for two more. Synergy with a disc, and with some of the most aesthetic passing you'll see in Echo Arena. Look at this. Lego to Nilly, Nilly to Matty, and Matty to Lego for two. All three of them knew exactly where that next pass was headed before they even touched the disc, and it earned them that high percentage shot at goal. Fantastic display of synergy there from their aptly named team. Towards the end of the first game, both teams showing off some goalkeeping play. Lego diving down to get the save on Boop, but then on the other end, Boop returning the favor with a save on Lego. Alright, moving all the way to game three. One minute left in Team Gravity with a disc and two point lead. Affin, full court to Viatrex, who via checks behind him, quickly shoots it, but coming in hot is Synergy with a clutch boost and the save to keep their hopes alive. And it does result in a two point conversion for Synergy to tie it up 10 to 10 with 41 seconds left on the clock. All tied up and game winding down. Lego with possession with 15 seconds left. But Affentair coming in huge here with a steal and with hands on fire but ice in his veins. He nails that shot to cap it off and win the game and the series for Team Gravity. What a finish. Zero hesitation on that shot. Yeah, Affentair, not one to hesitate, and it, no matter where you go in that midfield when you try to uh, return the disc, he's always there. The joke we always had about him is that there are two of them on the field. You're playing against four people when you're playing against any team that he's on. Uh, mm -hmm. Team Team it Gravity plays tricks in your head, man. It yeah. plays tricks in your head. <laughs> team Gravity win the series two to one, right down to the wire, as you saw. Team Gravity is looking good as ever, but Synergy is right there with them. It could have gone either way. The North American teams have got their work cut out for them come up the finals yeah without a doubt um you know for team gravity i mean look with all the shakeups that the europeans have seen these past couple of seasons it's some combination of boop and affentair have made it to the grand finals of every interregion land that we've had so far for echo arena so just the fact that now in season three they have reunited his teammates they're uh individually better than ever their team play is better than ever um and then they have viatrex who is another top tier player as a third it's just yeah, for Team Gravity, that's a recipe for success. And if you're North America, maybe a recipe for disaster to be determined. But, uh, you know, personal investments aside, you've just got to appreciate the competition in Echo Reno right now and just how much it continues to improve, uh, not only season after season, but just month after month. It's just everyone's getting so much better. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what it is, right? As uh, as Lemming and other people have said, the skill gap just keeps getting smaller and smaller. And speaking of that, it's important to note that Synergy barely lost this match. And I think they're uh, really going to start to shake things up in the EU. They have youth on their side, and we're already seeing younger players shaking things up in North American rankings. Yeah, well, it'll be exciting. You know, if we're going to go down, 
we're going to go down fighting <laughs> and maybe screaming and crying. But uh, in seriousness, competition, just incredible right now, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Yes, yes. Speaking of uh, competition, you wouldn't have any other way. We're moving on to Pizza League. We don't have any coverage of the North American ones for week one, uh, which is why it's important that people send in those clips, especially if you streamed anything yourself or a friend of yours was at least watching that you invited to spectate. So we have Ignite versus PMS. Um, on this side, this is North America Pizza League, right? And uh, we didn't have, uh, as I said, we didn't have too many clips of VRL, but we uh, we definitely have these these people fighting for that delicious slice of melted cheese. Oh yes, yeah, I'm excited to showcase these clips, uh, Pooh Nanners, because Pizza League. So we, we format our tournaments a, tournaments a little bit different, uh, more so in the style of traditional sports, you know, basketball, football, and so on. So we do two 10-minute halves and schedule it so every team plays each other at least once throughout the weeks, throughout the uh, the season. And it culminates in a playoff series at the end for that grand pizza prize. Yeah, I like that, man. It's like, a, like you said, it's like kind of like basketball. It feels more sports-like as opposed to just playing a video game the way that you have it. And I've found that you get better competition that way too as opposed to just doing a best of three you're just slapping yeah, well, in these 10 minute halves we've really enjoyed those we've also enjoyed a, a, on occasion when they do a, that high level play those 10 minute halves with 4v4 um, right. and you know me I love a good pizza party uh, our first matchup is Ignite versus PMS who combine their high level play with their hungry stomachs to give us a great game First half of play, Ignite with good defensive pressure on PMS, but Mad wisely resetting the pikes in the back line, and now you see PMS getting into triangle formation, setting themselves up with that pass to Mad, then Mad to Suburban, and Suburban to the hole for two. Ignite's turn on offense now, Sputnik going in for a bank shot, but Mad with the great hands and the save, sends a bowling ball clear down bottom of the ramp, and then immediately turns for the boost downfield, and mails in the open three. A Mad just putting his stamp on this entire play, you can't be mad about that one. Three minutes left in the first half, Far walking the disc into blue territory, and Fearless Far just yamming it over the trifecta of blue bodies to get Ignite two more points on the board. Next play, Pikes is rushed by the defense, forcing the wild throw, but Ignite coming in with a timely stack to intercept. Pikes, though, in perfect position to take it right back, send it to his teammates at mid, who send it down the field. Their stack gets broken, though, allowing Ignite to boost back first, but they overshoot the disc, giving Mad time to restack and reclaim that goal for two more. Second half of play, Wolf bringing up the disc. Wolf, the crossover, the bounce, and the jump shot over the defender. Wolf bringing those basketball plays into Pizza League with those razzle-dazzle moves. In this clip, we've got Mad taking the ramp shot. Now it's going to miss, but fall perfectly into the hands of a boosted suburban legend, but then right into the hands of Far, making the save after the pressure from Wolf. Well done by Ignite to boost back and deny what could have been an easy goal. The very next round, a similar play happens, Pike getting the pass to a cutting Mad, but Wolf once again with a defensive aggression to force the long two and Sputnik cleaning up at goal with the save and the clear. Yeah, Ignite put up a great defense in the second half of this game, but we're not able to overcome the offensive barrage of PMS, who take the game 25-12. to 12. Next up is an anticipated match between Kane Gorillas, who have been resurrected with the addition of Strembitsky to produce an unstoppable force, and Squid, a veteran stack team on the warpath. That's squid emoji to you. <laughs> half, squid with possession. Rock's trying to get the long cross to Speedy at the other end, but two Kangorillas there to cut it off. Can't get a clean clear, though. And then QL Young dipping in right here for the steal, and then the beautiful heads up pass to Speedy above Bowtie, getting him that open three. Now Kangorilla's on offense, moving up in line formation. Squid with great defensive coverage, but Loveridge threading the needle to Sealable, and Sealable somehow burying the shot right as it gets clocked in the face. And over some really tight defense, too. So quick on that one. Later in the first half, Squid with a small lead, but the Kangorillas coming out on offense here and putting on a passing clinic down the length of the entire arena. So fast, so fluid, avoiding that stack from Squid, and it earns Strambitsky the one-on-one -on -one payoff right at goal for two. Just fantastic disc movement there from the Kangorillas. With the half coming to a close, Squid comes out with a great offensive stack play here. QL getting the pass to Rocks on bottom ramp, Speedy breaking off from the stack, receiving the pass, and banging in the two-pointer for Squid. Definitely a set play of theirs, and they executed that to perfection. Kangorillas in the second half working their triangle offense, and Squid actually doing a fantastic job cutting off the passing lanes, but Sealable Bag with a great precision and recognition finding Strembitsky on that back wall, who brings it in for two. 
King Gorilla is spreading out into their triangle once again, and just watch how swarming they are on offense here. It's just pass and go, pass and go, pass and go. They keep themselves and the disc in constant motion, keeping the defense on their toes and creating scoring opportunities like that one. Make no mistake, Squid plays some strong defense. It's just King Gorilla's execution in this game so on point. Closing out this match, Strem with a cross to Loveridge, but Speedy reading it really nicely for the save and the clear. Now Rocks Titan in the background doing a key thing and interfering with that Kangorilla stack, delaying them exactly long enough for QL and Speedy to boost down and nail that three with not even a hair to spare. Great save by Speedy, and shout out to Rocks though for the dirty work to make that shot possible. King Gorillas ultimately take the match 38 to 25. Squid Emoji, as you called it, uh, definitely came to play with solid team coordination, but the pedigree and synergy on King Gorillas is proving to be nothing short of incredible. It really is. They are amazing, and, you know, as much as some of my teammates might not like to admit it, <laughs> Their team play is just out of this world right now, and uh, I think I I, know, I, I think privately both of them will admit that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's mainly mainly Strembitsky and Simeon. They you know they love going back and forth and stuff, so it's it's yeah. all in good fun. I mean, we all love each well, other. Well, Simeon, you know, I look forward to playing King Gorillas every time just because they really you know press you and challenge you hard. Simeon's an old basketball player, so he knows the importance mm -hmm. of trash talk and trying to get in the other player's <laughs> mind. So it's a very important meta. Anyway, next up is the young and terribly fast Team Joker versus the undefeated five-time land champions, Eclipse. I've been gassing on about how Team Joker is the future for a long time now, so let's see how the future stacked up against the present. Let's Starting off the game with that sweet camera work on the Eclipse Joust, which has been the fastest joust in the game the last couple seasons, though other teams certainly closing that gap as of late. Next clip, Team Joker with the somewhat uncommon floor-to-floor -floor triangle, Kung with an almost completely vertical pass down to Ryan Rhino, who puts it in for two. Later on, Eclipse turning up the defensive heat here near Bubble, but then Ryan Rhino with just a nasty stiff arm to create that space, and the nice crossover to Kung, who windmills it in for two more. Team Joker on offense once more, Kung flying in from above, but Simeon with a great anticipation on that pass, snagging it out of the air, then boosting with me to the other side, where I hit the open three. Half winding down, Kung trying to score one more for Joker, but Simeon with a rejection and the clear. Both teams now looking for their stacks. Now Joker actually gets there first, but they overshoot their targets. Lemming will grab the disc, show some patience here, gets it up to Simeon, and Simeon putting it home to barely beat the buzzer. Early in the second half now, Joker with an offensive stack, working it to our side of the floor. Ryan gets the pass off to Kung, who squeezes it over to Jaywalker, and Jaywalker just destroying my life with a most unexpected three-pointer from the bottom corner. Caught me taking a lunch break there or something. <laughs> but picking up the pieces of my soul and moving on, Disc gets loose after some good Joker defense, but then the scoop shot and Jaywalker again with a pizza pizzazz. At least it wasn't on me this time. Shortly after, Disc gets into the hands of Kung, who lines up the open three, but Simeon swooping into the last second, Ooh. picking up where he left off in the first half with that save. One minute later, Joker near the Eclipse goal with some nice passing, but Simeon yet again mm. with a killer save inches away from the goal. Then on the recovery, Ryan Rhino with a save of his own. Strong goalkeeping at play throughout this match. Oh man, Eclipse ultimately win with a score of 46 to 21. The players of Joker were able to trade goal for goal with Eclipse at a couple of different junctures. However, as is typical of the team, Eclipse was able to get a few back-to-back -back goal streaks and maintain momentum towards the end. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but Joker, you know, props to them. They are a really good team who I think don't get talked about nearly as much as they maybe should be. Um, they formed together last year, season two, and even though they were just outside the top four, uh, they still perform really well, and they took a lot of games over some great teams, including ours, on like two or three occasions. So, uh, you know, they've stuck together going into Pizza League, into the, this new season of VRL, and I think they're looking to make some real noise this time. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they already are shaking things up in VRL, so I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, we're already into week two, which we're not reporting on yet. We're going to try to do that next. But, you know, as a preview, they did, uh, they did pretty good. Uh, Squid <laughs> took on Eclipse in the final Pizza League Week 5 match in what ended up being a very competitive, entertaining matchup until the end-ish. Early on, Simeon with the disc, draws the defender away, then back passes to me. I find Lemming up top, who grabs it off the bounce. Lemming now, hitting the cutting Simeon, and Simeon with the gentle pass back to Lemming for the dunk. 
Squid on offense, QL Young at mid. QL, the reading a pass to Rocks, tighten down low, and Rocks seeing a small window with me out of position and nails it right off the backboard for three. Later in the first half, the disc gets loose, and again, it's Rocks with a tiny window of opportunity and nails it through two Eclipse defenders this time. And yes, I'm still one of them. Rocks starting to heat up here. Eclipse on offense with a potential 2-on-1 fast break developing. I do get caught up and miss the catch, but still recover. I then duck through the defense, and this leads to a nice little give-and-go exchange between Simeon and I to score off of our broken play, keeping defenders off balance with that frequent passing. Later in the first, QL the quarterback, passing to Speedy. I come flying in to swipe the disc, but Speedy slapping it out of my hands. Lemming retains, but then QL slaps it out of his hands, dies for the disc, and then great recognition to find Rox Titan anchored up above. And then Rox, with a tight angle, a Titan angle even, dropping another first half bomb on Eclipse. Very next play, QL intercepting the risky pass there, and then weaving a pass through middle, right to Rox Titan on the left side, and Rox just feasting on those three-pointers in this game. Well into the second half now, and Disc gets loose and floats down mid, but right as we're about to recover, a wild squid comes careening in for a quick grab and throw, and guess who? Rocks Titan, of course, just a man possessed at this point. Didn't even understand how hot he was until I came back to these highlights later. But moving on to the next one, Eclipse back on offense and executing some nice passing around the 16 arms of that squid stack. Back and forth at mid for a while, then eventually downfield once the stack is broken. Very similar to uh, what we saw earlier from Kangorillas. Now it buys Simeon the 1v1 opportunity at goal, but Sim, accidentally grabbing Rock's Titan as he dives in, throws off his shot momentum, but luckily Lemming flying in with his superhero cape to save the day. Final clip, disc gets loose, but watch the right side of your screen. I boost off one squid, two squid, punch the third, and then the no-look slap pass to Simeon right behind me, setting him up in style for that open three. It was a pretty stylish shot he had there, uh, slapping it over to Simeon, getting him to sink it. Yeah, I'm pretty glad that Simeon hit that shot because uh, <laughs> just like with basketball highlights, people don't tend to care about the flashy pass if they don't make the shot right after. So, you know, I won't lie, that felt really good. Oh man, it was textbook entertainment. It is always fun watching Eclipse play and watching uh, what you guys are able to pull off uh, when you need to pull out that clutch at the end. Um, I'm glad it made the cut. Uh, wait a minute. Is that the reason why you want to highlight week five of Pizza League? No. Yes. <laughs> well, it was a lot of work for that payoff, but I'll take it with multiple ties and lead changes throughout. Eclipse win 37 to 30. It was a solid exchange right up until about the last minute and a half, right? Well, yeah, it was a really close game. Anyone's game for the vast majority of that one. And uh, once we finally pulled ahead with about a minute or two to spare, we ran down the clock, you know, as we do, to secure the win, which I might add, Squid was thrilled about uh, i did have a clip but it was deemed a little too vulgar by the network so i could only you imagine. gotta do what you you gotta do what you gotta do for pizza man classic eclipse always stalling for the end well that is it for us thanks to all our players and viewers for supporting the show show us some love in the comments and get a conversation going as it helps rank the show rank up and get more exposure to people that don't know about our league Yep, and uh, though it took me a little longer to, you know, than intended to create and finish this pilot episode, I did enjoy it. Uh, it it's a learning process, and you know, one that who nanners is helping me get through. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, but hey, as always with my creative concoctions, uh, I hope the wait was worth it, and that it was some combination of informative and entertaining. Of course, as with everything we do here at Be Respawn, this is a community field project, so if you have any matches that you find to be highlight worthy, or any moments you find highlight worthy, be sure to send them our way. Um, even if it went uncasted, you can still send us clips from the players that streamed it, so yeah, we're always looking to showcase the amazing competition that Arena has to offer. Again, I am Poon Enters, joined by world champion Echo Arena player and Pizza League caster, Palador. That's right, Poonanners, and this show was brought to you by vrespawn.com, the only source for VR esports news. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter and stay up to date. Now, this episode was written by Palador himself. Triple Nipple, as always, is our outstanding director, and uh, now it's time for Palador to send us home. All right, well, thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, or at minimum, give me those thumbs up on Discord. I love those things. Um, We've got a lot more action to bring you next week, so stay tuned right here on V Respawn. And until then, thanks again, and I'll see you in the arena.